Hi, hi, it's Hoshi Chan here with Anime on Location at OhioCon 2016 here with Bill. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm good myself. Um, how are you enjoying your con? It went really well. Uh, we're at the Sunday of the convention, so we're winding down. Uh, we did our three-day workshop this weekend, and things went really well with it, so uh, we've been having a good time. Great. So how did you get started in the world of voice acting? I actually started back in 2001. I worked on a show called Assemble Insert uh, with a Mr. Joe DeGiorgi, who is here this weekend as well at the convention. Uh, he had a studio called Headline Sound up in uh, Tarrytown, New York, and they were dubbing titles for Right Stuff International. When I went in on that, I was like a bunch of little smaller parts like newscaster and man on the street and just different things and different characters throughout. And um, Joe really liked what he heard. And so uh, I was brought back to audition for several other things. Uh, the, the producer at Right Stuff at the time, Jeff Thompson, uh, was uh, very, between him and Joe, they were both very, very uh, helpful with helping me develop a career. And I you know, went off and I had started with a, a stage background. So after I had worked with them on that project, I started taking more classes for vocal, les vocal lessons and things like that. And I started auditioning and booked a bunch of different parts. From there, I was uh, Officer Yamamoto and Boogie Pop Phantom, and it just took off from there because that was my first actual credited character. And uh, yeah, I've I've been working. I've worked on dozens of uh, anime and video game titles in the 15 years since. Awesome. So you also uh, you are also Brock from Pokemon. Uh, so what does that mean? What does it mean to you to know that you still have so many loyal fans? Pokemon is an amazing franchise. Actually, this March they are celebrating the 20th anniversary of the original release of Red and Blue. So the game has been around for 20 years, and the show has been around for like 18 or 19 at this point. Uh, and it's just amazing. Like, there are fans that I meet that loved it when they were kids, and now they're in college and beyond. Like, it's, and, and so, like, I, I've had autographs with fans that are, like, in their 30s, and they're like, oh, man, when I was a kid, I loved this show. And then I will have, like, little 8, 10-year-old kids come up to me that are just discovering it for the first time, and they're like, oh, wow, you're Brock, and... Oh, it's so great. Can you sign my Pokemon cards? And it's really, really cool because you get that, like, amazingly large demographic of fans that have been affected over the last 20 years by it. Oh, that's awesome. So this weekend, you brought back uh, Voice Mickey Workshop. Could you tell us a little about that? The Voice Monkey Workshop is a three-day uh, 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 workshop that we do for the fans. A lot of conventions that, we, uh, that my friend Greg, who runs the workshop with me, have done in the past, we get asked at conventions and panels, like, oh, what's it like to be a voice actor? How would I become a voice actor? What can I do to, to learn more about being a voice actor? So we set up a program where we get kids to come in and we go through three different classes over three days. The first class, we, we show them and teach them about audition technique and have them do like what would be a mock audition for an animated project. And then on the second day, we bring them in and we pair them up with partners and have them do some acting that way. And then on the third day, which we just finished up today, we actually do dubbing with them. We'll, we'll, we have a microphone set up and a Pro Tools session and we have the kids do voice work for, you know, matching lip flap on screen and, and getting everything down like you would in a real professional animation studio. So it's really neat. It gives them the opportunity to take a look at it. And some kids are like, Oh man, wow, this is really hard. And it's like, yeah, you know, it's it's not it's not just making funny voices, but we've had a lot of kids who have come out of the program and then gone to their local colleges and stuff and started studying and working with vocal coaches and working with theater people and 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 getting the training so that they can not necessarily even get a career in voice acting, but in acting in general. Some people are like, "Oh man, you know, and and they I've had a couple of my students from cuz we've been doing this for 3 years now." that have gone on they're like I'm in my theater program and I'm doing all these shows on stage and I never thought that I'd want to do that I just thought I wanted to do cartoons and stuff and so you never know where it's going to lead from there but it's nice to give them an opportunity to kind of give it a shot. So if you're thinking about doing voice acting totally check that panel out I mean this workshop out uh, it sounds really interesting next time the convention I, I see this I'm definitely going to pop in. Um, so you worked on um, 
Nozomi in you worked in uh, Nozomi uh, Entertainment anime series called uh, the Third. The eye with the, I mean the girl with the blue eye. So how was it working on that project? Well, um, the cool thing about Nozomi was that they actually we worked with Joe Studio uh, for that, but with the Third. We had this great thing where we recorded some actors in New York and we recorded some actors in California. And on that project, actually, I'm not only in it, but Kyle Hebert, uh, who's one of my friends that I met through that project. Um, I had seen him on the convention circuit, but then he recorded in California, I recorded in New York. So then we saw each other at another convention. I was like, oh man, wow, we actually finally got to be in a show, even though we're on separate coasts. And uh, subsequently, I have, uh, in the last year, made the transition over to L.A., and he was one of the first people to kind of welcome me in, and he's like, oh, man, you know the voice acting community out here, it's so great, and he introduced me to a bunch of people out there, and I really feel like it was cool to have worked on that project because that kind of introduced me to a lot of the L.A. talent. Interesting. So in your bio, it says that you worked with uh, Eminem Company, so how was it working with well, I, I need to preface this by saying you won't hear me in an M&M's commercial. Um, I was in a couple games for the Wii. I was in uh, M&M's Kart Racing and M&M's Adventure and M&M's Beach Party. And what happened was uh, there was a local studio in New Jersey that was handling uh, the games for that. And they, because uh, actually the, the voice of the red and the blue, uh, the, the red and the yellow M&M's are um, Billy West who's the guy who's the voice of Fry in Futurama, and J.K. Simmons, who has done a lot of voice work, but you probably know him for the, he just won an Academy Award last year for the, for the movie Whiplash. But the two of them are the voices of Red and Yellow. And um, because they're recording out in California, and this was just like a small game company in New Jersey, they were like, we need somebody who can sound like these guys. So I was like, okay, well, you know, and we, we worked with that and, and recorded for them. So. In the game world, on the Wii console, you can uh, you can play you you can hear me as Eminem's characters. But the commercials, I'll leave that to Billy and J.K. <laughs> it's awesome. So it also says in your bio that you worked with uh, many people from around the world, uh, and in the world of uh, live action dubbing. How'd you get started with that, and has it taught you anything? It's really neat because from the anime industry. From those early days working with Jeff and Joe at Headline, I have gone on to meet other actors that work on other projects, and I've gotten involved with dubbing uh, shows that are from Korea and Italy and um, Spain and Turkey and just all over the world. And what has happened is that like some actors that I'll work with on a project will be like, oh, I'm doing this other project. And it's one of those word of mouth type of things where then you, you know, find out from somebody, you know, what other projects they're working on and uh, get the chance to audition and, and get involved. And it's really kind of broadened my horizons, not only doing animation work, but doing live action work and working with shows that are in so many different languages. It's, it's, it's really just been an amazing experience. Cool. So um, you worked on the groundbreaking anime uh, Gravitation. So how was it working on that, knowing that it has such a huge impact in the industry? I, um, I really enjoyed working on Gravitation. Uh, it was one of the first anime that really focused on a gay relationship, which was an amazing thing. The director, Bill Timoney, was really proud that uh, we were able to do that because uh, you know, we wanted to, you know, that we found it neat that, that anime was able to be available for the, the LGBT market. And um, we thought that that was really uh, a, a, an important project to work on. And to this day, I go to conventions and, you know, when they announce me at opening ceremonies, it's like, oh, he's Brock and Pokemon. And there's like, everybody's like, ah! And, you know, they're like, oh, he was also Thomas Suguchi in, in Gravitation. And you'll get a small, very devoted fan base that is just so thankful for that show. I had, uh, I've had a couple people come up to me and be like, this really affected me and I, you know, it was, it was, it was, a, it was, it was very important to me and very dear and thank you so much for being a part of that. And I'm just grateful that I was able to be a part of it. 
That's fantastic. So you also worked on the show Ginchikin, what I have to, which I have to say, I am a huge fan of. Um, so uh, how was that for you? In Genshiken, I played Tanaka, who is the cosplay uh, fanboy, and I actually don't do costuming myself, but it was it was fun playing the character because there were still aspects of him that reminded me a lot of myself, because when I was in college, I was part of an anime club, and um, again, the director from, uh, from Gravitation, Bill Timoney, directed Genshiken as well, and he's like an old, like... 50s horror sci-fi movie buff and so he understands fandom but he's anime he comes from like a big theater and movie background so he's like I don't know a lot about the anime and we sat and talked about it a lot actually to the point where as a goof he had put me down in the credits as the otaku consultant for the show because they'd be like oh well you know they're talking about Castle of Cagliostro here or this is a reference to Gundam and he'd be like oh tell me more about that show because Bill just wanted to absorb as much knowledge as he could for the production and I was like oh this was like me when I was in college you know and there was a there's this great scene where they're getting ready for winter break and they're packing up the game systems and I'm like yep there was many a many a winter break that I spent with like three or four people sitting in front of the Sega Saturn playing Bomberman on New Year's Eve like yeah I guess we could have gone to a party but hey you know we're playing Bomberman <laughs> this is still fun too absolutely so is there anything you want to tell your fans like any upcoming uh, projects um, I'm not allowed to talk about anything but 2016 is going to be a big year so what I would suggest is that people go to uh, Facebook, facebook.com slash Bill's Voice. It's B-I-L-L-S-V-O-I-C-E, all one word, Bill's Voice. Uh, and I'm also on Twitter at the same, so I'm at Bill's Voice on Twitter. Um, I will be making announcements throughout the year. There's some really cool stuff, uh, especially because my transition to California, I, I have been involved in a couple video game projects that are going to be really cool that I'm looking forward to talking about, but as we go along into the year, more things will be revealed. So thank you so much for being on the show, and it was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. So you guys heard it here on Anime on Location. Peace.